Chapter 4 of Henry and Ribsy by Beverly Cleary Henry's Canine Teeth That evening, when Henry wore his sailor hat to the dinner table, he noticed his mother glance at him and then look at his father. She looked as if she was going to say something, but instead she sighed and was silent. You're looking pretty gloomy, remarked Mr. Huggins as he filled Henry's plate. Yeah, said Henry, don't give me much to eat. I'm not very hungry. Henry was careful to bite with his solid front teeth. He couldn't take chances with his loose, loose teeth. He had to have them to show off to people who started making fun of his hair. I'm afraid the boys were giving him a bad time about his hair, explained Mrs. Huggins. Would you feel better if we went to the barber to see what he could do about it, asked Henry's father. A short crew cut might help. Well, maybe, but I don't think anything would help very much, said Henry. He wiggled first his right tooth, then his left tooth. I wonder if, began Mrs. Huggins and paused. If what, Mr. Huggins asked. Oh, nothing, I was just thinking, Mrs. Huggins suddenly smiled at Henry. Henry wiggled his teeth and wondered what his mother was thinking about. He hoped it wasn't another, anything like another home haircut. Really, Henry, said his mother, you shouldn't go around with your teeth flapping that way. Oh, Mom, they don't flap, protested Henry. They just wiggle. I see that by the paper that old teeth left under pillows are turning into quarters instead of dimes because the cost of living has gone up, said Mr. Huggins. Henry grinned. Right now, he could use two quarters, but he could use, he needed those two loose teeth more. The next morning, Henry examined his hair in the mirror. He could not see that it had grown any, so he put on his sailor hat and moped around the house. He tried drawing a face on an electric light bulb with colored chalk. When he found the face did not shine through the shade the way he had planned, he felt even gloomier. He stood with his nose pressed against the front window pane until Ribsy scratched at the door and asked to be let out. Henry followed his dog out the door and sat down on the front steps. Gloomy as he felt about his hair, he didn't want to risk losing that fishing trip by giving Ribsy a chance to get into trouble with the neighbors. While he kept his eye on Ribsy, he could not keep from poking first his right tooth, then his left tooth with his tongue. They were looser, all right. He discovered he could poke the two teeth out between his lips so they felt like little tusks. As Henry experimented with his teeth, he happened to glance up Clickitat Street. Then, thinking he must be seeing things, he jumped up and stared. Robert and Scooter were walking toward him, both of them wearing sailor hats with the brims turned down over their eyebrows. Well, how do you like that, thought Henry, wearing sailor hats just to make fun of me. A couple of fine friends they turned out to be. Well, they weren't going to get a chance to tease him. Come on, Ribsy, he said. Let's go in the house before they see us. Ribsy did not care to go into the house. He was busy sniffing the rose bushes along the edge of the Grumby's property. Okay, you old dog, muttered Henry and steeled himself for the meeting with Scooter and Robert. Side by side, the two boys walked down the street. They did not seem... Oops. Oops, where am I now? Okay. They did not seem to see Henry. Looking straight ahead, they stalked past the Huggins' house. Henry started after them. What's the matter with them anyhow, he wondered. What did I do to them? Then a thought struck Henry. Could it be? No, it couldn't. Yes, it must be. Suddenly, Henry had a feeling he was no longer the only boy with a chewed-up haircut. Hey, he yelled. Robert and Scooter stalked on. Why were they acting like that? Henry wondered. It's not my fault if they have home haircuts. Henry felt he had to know for sure. If he wasn't the only one with chewed up hair, things wouldn't be so bad. Hey, fellows, he yelled again, and as he yelled, his tongue touched one of his loose teeth. 
What were a couple of loose teeth, anyhow? And he made up his mind. Want to watch me pull my teeth? Robert and Scooter hesitated. They stopped and turned around. I've thought of a keen way to pull them, said Henry, trying frantically to think of an unusual way to get those teeth out of his mouth. How, demanded Scooter, and he and Robert came up the steps. You'll see, said Henry feebly, but he thought, how am I going to pull them? To stall for time, he fished through his pockets and found a piece of string. Uh, how come you fellows are wearing hats, he ventured. Come on, Robert, said Scooter. He said he was going to pull his teeth, but he, I guess he didn't mean it. I am too going to pull them. Henry was determined not to let the boys get away before he found out what had happened. He carefully untangled the string and tried to sound casual. Did you fellows get your hair cut, he asked. We sure did, said Scooter, and it's all your fault. What do you mean it's all my fault, asked Henry. What did I do? You know, Scooter scowled at Henry, and if you ask me, it was a pretty mean trick, as bad as tattling. Worse, said Robert. What mean trick, Henry demanded. What are you talking about? Your mother phoned our mothers and told them about the sale of hair clippers. That's what, said Scooter. She phoned just like you told her to, and they both went right over to the clipper sale at the Colossal Drugstore. My mother? Henry was genuinely bewildered. My mother phoned your mother's? Honest, didn't you know about it? Robert asked. Cross my heart and hope to die, said Henry. Well, so that was what his mother had been thinking about at dinner last night. Leave it to her to think of something. Henry wanted to laugh and shout, but he didn't dare, not with Scooter glowering at him. See, said Robert to Scooter, I told you it wasn't his idea for his mother to pull our, for his mother to tell our mothers. I knew Henry wouldn't do a thing like that, and you said he would. Henry looked injured. You're some friend thinking I'd do a mean thing like that. Well, maybe you didn't, said Scooter grudgingly, but I bet you haven't really thought of a way to pull your teeth. I have too, said Henry. Now how was he going to get out of this fix, he wondered, as he slowly tied one end of the string to his right tooth. Then he slowly tied the other end of the string to his left tooth, while he tried to think of a way to stall for time. How about letting me have a look at your hair, he suggested, anxious to see if their haircuts were worse than his. Come on, let's see you pull your teeth, said Scooter. I need some more string, explained Henry. I can't pull them until somebody gives me some more string. Robert and Scooter searched their pockets. I don't have any, said Robert. Me neither, said Scooter. You're just stalling. I am not either stalling. Should he suggest they go or should he suggest they go around to the backyard? Henry wondered. Maybe he could climb the cherry tree and hang the string that joined his two teeth over a branch and jump out of the tree. It was not much of an idea, but it would have to do. Henry started to call Ribsy, who was napping with his nose on his paws, when suddenly he had an inspiration. Of course! Why hadn't he thought of it before? All he needed was a little cooperation from Ribsy, and this time he had a feeling that for once Ribsy would do the right thing at the right time. Henry picked up Ribsy's tug of war rope. He tied one end to the middle of the string that joined his two teeth and tossed the other end onto the grass. Here, Ribsy, he called. Ribsy opened one eye, looked at Henry, and then he opened the other eye and bounded across the lawn. Woof, he said. Henry braced himself in case it hurt to have his teeth pulled. Henry grabbed at the end of the rope, growled deep in his throat, and tugged. Henry's teeth flew out of his mouth so fast he didn't even feel them go. Henry put his hand to his mouth and stared at his teeth lying on the grass. They had come out so easily he could scarcely believe they were gone. He poked his tongue into the right hole the right hole in his mouth, and then the left hole. They were gone, all right. How's that for a way to pull teeth, he asked. They were canine teeth, so I thought I'd let my dog pull them out.
Say, that was a smart idea, exclaimed Robert. I never heard of anyone having a dog pull his teeth before. Maybe I can get him to pull the next one I have loose. Good old Ribsy, said Henry, and hugged him. Maybe Ribsy did get into a little trouble once in a while, but he was pretty useful for getting out of a tight spot. Ribsy wriggled with delight and licked Henry's face with his long pink tongue. A tooth-pulling dog, that's pretty good. Scooter sounded impressed. Take you long to train the old garbage hound? Not very long, and he's not a garbage hound. Henry untied his teeth and put them in the watch pocket of his jeans, for safekeeping, until he put them under his pillow that night. He's a smart dog, aren't you, Ribsy? Woof, answered Ribsy, and worried the rope... Henry looked at Scooter and Robert's sailor hats. Well, how about letting me see your haircuts, he asked, pulling off his own hat. Nope, Scooter took a hold of the hat and tried to yank it further down over his ears. Aw, oh, come on, Scoot, coaxed Henry. I pulled my teeth like I said I would. Robert snatched off his own hat, and he and Henry studied each other's haircuts. Yours is better in front, but mine's better in back, Robert decided. At least it feels better. Henry examined Robert's hair. It looked pretty bad, a little worse than his own, he decided, especially where it was gouged out over his left ear. I suppose hen hair really does grow pretty fast, said Henry. Anyway, we're better off than Scooter, observed Robert. He's bald on one side. It'll take months to grow out. No kidding, said Henry. Really bald? Then he and Robert began to laugh. Scooter looked even gloomier. It's all right for you guys to laugh. You're in the same room at school and you can stick together. But I'll be the only one in my room who doesn't have a boughten haircut. Gee, that's tough, said Robert, but he didn't sound very sorry. It sure is, agreed Henry cheerfully. What did he care about a haircut? As Scooter said, he and Robert could stick together. Then Henry had an idea. Hey, fellows, look he said. He turned on the golden hose, the, excuse me, he turned on the garden hose, filled his mouth with water, and blew as hard as he could. Two streams of water shot through the gaps in his teeth. I bet you wish you could spit double, he said. Boy, oh boy. He still had something to show the kids at school. Something besides his haircut.